Welcome to A Word From The Wise, the Soul Wise podcast. We come to you the beginning of each month where we talk about products that we do, uh, news in the industry, and uh, just anything that we think you might be interested in. You can hear us on Spotify, Amazon Music. We can be seen on video on YouTube, uh, or just find us wherever you normally get your podcasts from. Hello everybody, welcome to A Word From The Wise, our monthly podcast. Uh, this month we are going to talk about the new 5G products from Teltonica. If you are listening to the podcast, it might be that you might want to have a look at us on YouTube at some point as well, because there will be some visuals, which is not really podcasty, but is what it is. We wanted to show the difference between the gateway and the router and so on. It will describe it as well, but hopefully we'll get across what uh, what we need to do. So firstly, my first question to you, Steve, mm -hmm. is uh, what's the difference between a gateway and a router? And I didn't want you to ask that. I know you not, didn't, but, um, but we need to explain a, it. There's a blurredness between them. You can quite often use a gateway a gateway, as a router. And the, and the router is quite s bigger. Yeah, well, there's a lot of functionality which is chopped out of a router to make a gateway. A gateway is usually designed for only one client sat behind it. Right, okay. So, for example, it only has a LAN port, a yep. uh, single LAN port, whereas you notice the, the router has a multiple LAN ports, but also has a WAN port. Yeah. So uh, it can be actually be used as a normal broadband router as well. Right. I and mean, what you can actually do with... Uh, nearly all of the Teltonic uh, true routers is do low balancing, so you can actually use uh, a normal broadband input as well as mixing in the 4G slash 5G connectivity at the same time. Yeah. Whereas the gateway really is just for connecting to a mobile to a mobile network. Yeah. Um, also, the uh, a lot of the uh, router functionality that you would normally want in a normal router is all chopped out in a, in a in a gateway. It's really designed for Internet of Things type product. So, so a gateway then is kind of a really simple router. It's really simple router, yeah. but they're quite often using modem mode. Right. So you don't even use the router functionality in them. Yeah. Um, and the good thing, obviously, with the Teltonica products is they are actually usable on their RMS platform as well. Their right. Their okay. platform, so you could do monitoring of them. Yeah. Um, but usually things like water boards or something like that. Oh, right. Okay. Want to put them so you're you your average home user. I won't have one in my home. No. I, I might consider having a five G router like yes. this RX uh, X fifty. But that, that the TRB five hundred yeah. is not really designed for me no. to have at home. No, no. So it's more of a businessy type thing. Yeah. So for the purposes of um, this video and podcast, we're, we're predominantly going to talk about the RX fifty, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Okay. So <sighs> why, what's the delay? Why is it taking so long for Teltonica to catch up with 5G? Well, they say that they had a working prototype a year ago. Yeah. And we kept on pressuring them, when's it going to happen, when's it going to happen? Because other manufacturers are actually producing. In fact, we actually had a, uh, an alternative 5G product which we were sourcing from China. Yeah. Um, as a stopgap measure, which was a good product. But we wanted to really stick with the Teltonica brand because yeah. it's the brand we know and we have an uh, you know, association with the company. And it's a proper quality product it's as well, isn't it? Really. Not, not to slag off the other product that we were actually were selling. No, well, absolutely. <laughs> that, that, to be fair, that was good as well. It However, was a good product. It was expensive though. Really. Yeah. It was yeah. more of a higher end yeah. thing, wasn't it? Whereas yeah. this is more of a yeah. mainstream type of reason. Yeah. So Teltonica basically said, well, we've got a product, but the problem is that the chipsets in them are just too expensive to launch right. it onto the market. Right, okay. They, sorry, bang the microphone in. Um, they're saying that the, they just would, would not be able to sell them because they were so expensive. So they've been waiting for the availability of the 5G models to come down, yeah. 5G chipsets to come down to an appreciable level to bring the price down to a sensible level. Still an expensive route, I would hasten to add, but Nowadays we're talking what about circa seven hundred pounds. But it's on a par with other things, yeah. Other, you know, other similar home yeah. user type yeah. Yeah. routers. Yeah. Okay. What I noticed when I was putting it on the website, there was um, some new letters I hadn't come across before. So these ones seem. What's NSA and SA? What does that all mean? And SA means non-standalone. SA means standalone. Right. So okay. Non-standalone five G 
means that it also uses part of the 5 4G infrastructure or the LTE infrastructure okay. for management and control. And in fact, a lot of the for uh, for non standalone NSA, a lot of the 5G processing and handling is actually done by software running on the 4G LTE platform. All oh, right, so does that make it kind of not true 5G? It's not true 5G, and is that the same for all the routers on the market? They well, they all support both modes. Right, all, okay. all the pro all the quality products do support um, non non standalone NSA yeah. and SA standalone. Yeah. SA is true 5G. Yeah. So with with SA you get the uh, maximum multi gigabit capability, the high client count, the far superior apparently voice quality. Yeah, I take that for a pinch of because I don't actually know. I've never hit listened to a true. 5G yeah. SA call, uh, very low latency, as I say, staggeringly high client count, that sort of thing. So the NSA model is cut back on its features, basically because it's running as an emulation piece of software running on the 4G core, okay. the hardware core. So it's not as fast as true 5G. Um, Rumours have it that it starts to bottle out when you get to about a gig. Right. Whereas true 5G, as I say, will go to 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, some stupid gig speed. Um, not that whether you'll ever see it or not, I don't know. But uh, also the client count is, is, is locked down. Uh, you don't get the staggering client count that true 5G can cope with. But it was a way of them bringing in 5G services without having to go to the hugely expensive cost of replacing all the 4G masks. Ah, oh, right, okay. So so th this is not a limitation with the routers. This this is the service that's been this provided is service by the carriers. Thing. But I have been doing some research uh, literally this morning yeah. um, about the rollout of true 5G SA. Yeah. And some cities have actually started to introduce true 5G SA masks. Right. And as I said earlier, I've noticed that in, in our city in Hull, yeah. several huge, great big 5G masks have suddenly appeared right next door to the existing 4G masks. Right, okay. Which, so I'm thinking that we've started to get a rollout of true 5G happening now. Oh, so that'll be interesting to see what feedback we get on that then, won't it? Yeah, so, uh, but as I say, you know, even emulated 5G, they're talking about one gig performance yeah. and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, it's probably usable for what most people want, isn't nothing, it? Really? Well, <laughs> to be fair, most yeah, people only really need a 4G. They only need 4G, you know, if you can get to uh, 300 meg or whatever. What's that? Multi. If you can get, uh, you yeah. know, several hundred meg performance at your 4G, do you really need 5G? Yeah. Mm, that's a debatable point, really. So the other thing to notice, if anyone's watching on the video, is there are a lot more antennas for the Rut X50. So it does GPS and Wi-Fi as well. So obviously the TRB. Yeah, is which a, you a don't you, you don't generally get on a on a on a gateway product. So yeah, this has got the uh, it's got the four uh, mobile antennas on it because it operates as a four by four MIMO service. Right. Okay. And with five G, each uh, each stream is about eight hundred and something meg. So you multiply by four and you get to circa, I think it says it's 3.3 meg. Yeah. That'll, but that's in true 5G standalone mode. Yeah. Um, if it was in um, emulated 5G or 5G NSA mode, I say people are saying that you really it's bottling out at about one gig performance. Right. Okay. Um, but it also uses the four antennas for uh, up to category 20 LTE. Yeah. which is 4G yeah. to you and me. And uh, that itself is something like up to potentially a two gig right. LTE speed. So if anyone had, was just looking for a really good 4G router. I wouldn't buy this. You wouldn't, right, okay. I'd go for something like the X14. Right, okay. Which, um, although um, the LTE speed is not the theoretical category 20 yeah it's still category 12 which is a potentially 600 meg performance yet again right. using four antennas i would be tempted if i wanted to get the best out of lte to go for something like the cap yeah. the cap 12 router mm -hmm. purely because of a cost saving measure um, so if you don't need the 5g i wouldn't necessarily be rushing out no. to buy it. not at the moment no prices are changing 
Uh, we've already seen two price drops on this already, literally in the last what couple of months. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, you know, you might well find by this time next year that the price of 5G routers has come down to maybe two thirds of what it is now. Well, talking about that, obviously we, we've only had the five samples through, which went straight out the went, door. Went but straight out the door. And the next yeah. slot's not due till January anyway, yes, is it? Yes. And, and that's a likelihood. It's not likely to come any sooner than that. It is going to be January. It's, it's fairly fixed in stone that it will be January. Yeah. When you were holding that, I noticed it's got a USB port on it as well. Why? Why would you want a USB? I don't know. All right. What does it say you can use the USB for? Oh, I wish I'd asked now. You know, you shouldn't have asked that because I was hoping <laughs> well, you might uh, that wasn't ask a planned that. question. So. Because I spotted that earlier on, and I thought I really need to look up what that Maybe USB is. Maybe it's a storage, perhaps. Or something. Um, I think what it is probably for is probably for um, localized storage. Yeah. Because quite a few of the routers you can buy nowadays have a localised NAS capability, yeah. network attached server capability, yeah, yeah. Uh, storage capability. Oh, no, the again. TRB doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it wouldn't really get that on a, a TRB. Yeah. yeah. The, so talking of things that look to be different on it, this one says it does mesh. How does that work? It does What's mesh Wi-Fi, yeah. um, which is that repeating Wi-Fi technology. Um, Mesh is a way for people, hopefully, in a more in a domestic environment, to get around the fact that Wi-Fi doesn't want to go through brick walls. Yeah. So with a mesh, you put a series of uh, repeating nodes scattered around the property, and they all repeat the, the the Wi-Fi between them. So will any old repeater work with these? Or? No, you need to use an 11s. Uh, mesh Wi-Fi product. Yeah, I noticed that because previous things we've done have always been K and R. So what, yeah. it, what's the difference with S? Well, you know? S is now a proper certified standard right. for the uh, for the handshaking that goes between the mesh nodes. Because the thing about what 11S will do is um, it was constantly optimizing the best way of the data to get from the router to the client. Yeah. So rather than always going this repeater, that repeater, that repeater client, if it finds a better route, so for it might, might go router, this repeater, that repeater, that repeater client. So yeah. it's constantly working out which is the best way to do it. Right. So 11S incorporates that protocol. Um, had a look yet again, and there's some brands out there that support it. Surprisingly, even some of the cheap and cheerful brands, like the Tender brand, Mesh yeah. Products, they support 11S. Yeah. Um, the Google, uh, system that supports 11s right so it could be that someone's already got something in place that will just work with yes this in as well. yes excellent um so other things it's it i assume it works with the rms system from it Teltonica. works with the teltonica rms system and like uh, like all the teltonica routers it's a bloody good router it's, yeah um, i like the teltonica routers they're, yeah they're well thought out they are coming from that that business environment well, I think that's a lot, and the, they're made of the metal as well. I think yeah, they're made of just metal. Just have a nicer feel about it. <laughs> yeah, it? You, you think you're getting something, I think, as I say, and, uh, well, it's a bit more robust, isn't it, than a plastic box? And I think if you're spending 600 quid, you don't really want a plastic box, do you? Yeah, yeah. and of course, because they, they support all of the, the DIN rail option mounting capabilities yeah. that all the Teltonica routers support, uh, which yet again harkens back to their business environment. Right, yeah. Industrial, industrial. Oh, that's the, the industrial phrase. look industrial, about it. Industrial, yeah, yeah. yeah, because yeah. they can actually be mounted in racks and all that sort of thing. And as you say, we've got things like the uh, the Teltonica switches, which are rack mounted switches, so you can actually uh, DIN rail mount those. So you can have this and yeah. a DIN rail mounted switch next to it. And if you do a DIN rail mounted um, battery backup solution for them and all that sort of thing, you can put a DIN rail power supply yeah. in. So you can actually have a whole series of DIN rail products. Yeah. Um, well, talking of mounting, that brings us on to the one failing we have found with these, doesn't it? They don't have feet. So if you don't, don't want a feet. feet. <laughs> so if, if you're watching on the video, we've got some feet. So we've, um, so you can buy feet for them yeah. if you wanted to. They're little, they're little stick on feet. It's um, the small things. I think it's less than a quid, isn't it? But yeah. I think if, if you've got it, for instance, if your work desk, if you're a bit fancy, is a glass desk, you don't really want to put that straight down, do you? So no, having some, no. some rubber feet. Well, it came about because I'm, I want to use a, a Teltonica router at home. Yeah. I've got Zeitzel at the moment. Yeah. And um, it's starting to just creak at the edges of age wise and that sort of thing. So I thought, oh, I'll put a Teltonica router in. Yeah. But her indoors, there's no way she's going to accept that on her nice shiny wooden sideboard. Well, absolutely. Yeah, she'll want to scratch it. Yeah. Scratch the whatever. And it probably won't, but 
So, you know, it's just you know, little, little stick on feet. Well, who knew you could even buy stick on feet? I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, well, I mean, you can. other other suppliers of stick on feet, stick on feet do exist they out do, there. Do. So, but we just thought we'd get some in and um, certainly I shall be uh, nicking a set from downstairs from my time for reader. Excellent. And they are in the accessories if anybody wants to mm. use that. So. Mm. Um, the other thing, of course, is it does VPN support as well. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's like all of the top, all the decent, you know, Teltonic routers. They've got VPN support, which is another reason why I'm going to use a Teltonic router at home yeah. for VPN connectivity to work and all that sort of thing. Really good VPN engine built into them. It's a piece of doddle to set up. Yeah. And I can say that from experience. After after pulling my hair out trying to set up a Zyxel VPN put in the Teltonica VPN and it's just a single page, tick, 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 put a password in, blah, 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 and it worked. It Real user worked. friendly. Yeah. yeah, and it even worked talking to us, to our Zyxel router here. Yeah. Um, so, and the difficulty there was not setting up the Teltonica end, it was setting up the Zyxel end. Yeah. Because it's just a bit too complicated, really, for its own good. Whereas the uh, VPN engine built into the Teltonica routers, it's simplicity, it works with just about all the platforms, so it's got PPTP and you know ipsec and all the other VPN protocols are all supported and it just works. You know. The uh, these new ones they'll work with the Bat One Twenty as well. The yeah, Teltonica yeah, UPS. Yeah, they'll yeah. work with that. Um, obviously, potentially with a reduced um, lifetime of the batteries. Why is that then? Is that because they're a bit more power hungry? They're going to be yeah. power hungry. It's yeah. going to be a power hungry beastie that. Um, so. Um, Whereas you might not get an hour out of it, you might only get 20 minutes out of it or something like that. Yeah. But um, it's there really as a standard emergency, so you can run around and sort something out like a you know, a backup generator or something like that. But yet again, that's harking back to the industrial application, industrial heritage. Yeah. So looking around at the competitors in the market, the the thing the, the two things stand out really as far as I'm concerned. The extra Ethernet ports. Most of the others only seem to be one Ethernet port. I yeah, that's quite good. And we've got a longer warranty, two-year warranty on the Teltonic. Yeah, we've got the two-year yeah. warranty. Um, there are um, other brands out there. Yeah. Um, I suppose, if I'm allowed to mention it, there is a Netgear. Uh, the Net Nighthawk. The yeah. Nighthawk yeah. they've got out there, which um, is um, it's a good product, Yeah. but it's very domestic orientated. Um, well, probably that's why it only has the single Ethernet port on that Yeah, um, so it's... Uh, you could argue that it might look better on your sideboard than that, but um, it hasn't got a lot of the in-depth functionality, yeah. um, like the RMS platform and that sort of thing that you would get out of the Teltonica products. Yeah. Uh, the VPN engine, um, I'll be honest, I don't even know if it's got a VPN engine, but say yeah. you've got a brilliant VPN engine with uh, and. Um, on paper, the uh, Netgear products say they're a little bit quicker, but in reality, the difference between getting a perhaps a theoretical 3.8 gig download and a theoretical 3.3 gig download in the real world. Well, based on what you said earlier, it's probably yeah, yeah. negligible, isn't it? You're really yeah. going to get it anyway, yeah. so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Yeah. They're, they're roughly the same sort of price at the moment. I say prices are dropping all the time. Yeah. But um, I'll go for the Teltonica product. I like the Teltonica product. Best. It's a nice sort of. I, I like the the chunky feel about it. Looks <laughs> looks quality, doesn't it? It looks quality. Oh, just, You've got the dual SIM capability, of course, on these that, as well. Yeah. So um, that's yet again harking back to their business industrial application, where you've got dual SIM for failover and that sort of thing. I admit, not necessarily a feature applicable to the average domestic punter. But, um, to be fair, how many domestic users are going to go out and spend 600 quid on a router at this stage of the game anyway? There'll be a future-proofing group you'll that will. Be, you'll be yeah. surprised. Yeah. I, I bet a lot of people are spending six, 650 quid on a 5G router. Yeah. I wouldn't spend 650 Me quid neither. on a 5G router. No. But, you know. but overall, for another new product from Teltonic, we're good very product. impressed. It's a yeah. good product. Um, can't complain about it. It ticks all the boxes. I say we've had a sample batch in they've all flown straight out the door before they even arrived they were, they were all sold yeah um, everybody who got one says it's a brilliant piece of kit yeah um, so hopefully um, sales will start to grow and um, so the only problem at the moment is, is trying to get them in yeah or more specifically trying to get them in at the right price um, so um, and as they're becoming more and more popular the price will just it's just going to start coming down yeah 
um, and hopefully this time next year they'll be, you know, I would not be surprised if they'll be two thirds the price they are. Yeah, yeah probably in line with the rut X's for um, for four G as they come down, perhaps. Maybe, do you think? Actually, ironically, I suppose if you look at the price of the teltonic routers over the last 12 months, they've all gone up in price rather than coming down in price. Yeah. Purely based upon the um, currency fluctuations, import carriage charges, yeah. and um, the price of the, of the chipsets inside, the chipset prices inside of the chipset. Chipset and currency has been a nightmare yeah. across the board in our industry, though, hasn't it? Really? The, the LC chipsets have doubled in price in the last 12 months. Yeah. And when you think of the average, average router, probably two thirds of it is actually the, the LCE or the 4G modules inside, or the 5G modules in price. Yeah. But the 4G model of price have just doubled in price in 12 months. So it's obviously produced a knock on effect on the price of the routers. Do you think they'll bring out any other 5G routers? I mean, obviously, in the 4G stuff, we've got quite a range. They've got quite a range. Um, I'm not sure what more they. It's it difficult is to know what 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 more you would want out of a five yeah. G router. Yeah. Uh, I can't see what what you would want at more you would want out of. A 5G I suppose router. the only thing they might want to consider doing is is a more domestic one, like they went for the TCR one hundred. Yes, I suppose that would make definitely, and if they could do a uh, a more domestic orientated product yeah. and still retain a lot of the functionality. Uh, Usability, which they've done with the TCR100. The TCR100 is an excellent domestic product. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. And um, if I wanted a 4G router at home, I'd be very seriously thinking of the TCR TCR yeah. product. It ticks all the boxes. It's got category um, category six LTE, so it's yeah. got potentially up to 300 meg LTE. It's got all the LAN port. It's still got all the VPN functionality. It's still got all the RMS functionality. It's still got all of the nice features and that you get out of the Teltonica software, yeah, um, but at a domestic orientated price level. Yeah, uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they do a 5G version of that in the yes, new year. Yeah. I guess we'll see how this one goes first, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and then who knows what might yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to add about uh, the 5G stuff? I don't stuff? know what else is on my list. Of no, that's it, we've covered that everything that was on the list. Well, I suppose one thing we could cover is, um, obviously we do the pointing antennas, so is there a reason why you might want to add a an antenna to one of these? 5G is not, the signals for 5G are even worse at going through objects than the 4G ones. Yeah. Um, you've got almost double the frequency for 5G compared with the 4G frequency bands and that does mean you've got very limited range out of the 5G infrastructure. Right. And um, I don't know if you've noticed but the, the when they're putting the 5G mass in that I commented on earlier, yeah. there's many more 5G Mars going in than there are 4G. Yeah, because well, that makes sense. You, so. You've got half the range. Yeah. The radio waves only go half as far, so you've, right. got, a, you've got a double up on the number of Mars. Um, <clears throat> now that does mean that for the average uh, situation where you've got a router inside, you, it's probably even more important that you're going to need an outdoor antenna. Right. So uh, something like our, our Dash 41. Yeah, four so that's the X41 Dash 41. That's the Omni, and there is a 5G, uh, there is a directional version yeah, of that as well, isn't there? Yeah, that's 2, yeah. So yeah, we've got. Well, that's a 2x2, two two, uh, I think 4x4 is the 024. The, right? That's right, yeah. So, so the 024 is the new 4 Which we're hoping to have towards the <coughs> November as well. Yeah, that fits true, in yeah. time wise as well, doesn't it? Yes. So. Excellent. Oh, so, we're, so we've certainly got antennas to suit. That's, mm. that's the main mm. thing, isn't it? Mm. And the, the pointing Teltonica friendship is, uh, yeah, is they, quite a good one. They've joined themselves yeah, up they've now. They've become besties this year. Yeah, well, we've been, as you say, we've been known to try for years to try and get them to talk to each other. And, and now they have. Because they, they both do quality products yep. and they both do a, a, a you know, good product range that interlocks with each other. So. Yeah, and then pointing at what their new enclosures coming through as well, so that's another, yes. another interesting product. Yeah. What is I it? don't imagine they'll be particularly a big seller, but uh, most people seem to want the router inside and then the antenna outside, but there will be a few folks that would like it all in. Because a lot of people probably want to try and get away with using the Wi-Fi built into the router. Probably true, yeah. Um, I, would, I wouldn't use the Wi-Fi built in the router, I would have a separate Wi-Fi infrastructure. Yeah. Um, I mean, even my site's got a home. There's no Wi-Fi on it. You just have a 
do an old-fashioned access point plugged in the back. Yeah. But um, if you put it in an outdoor housing, of course that option's completely taken away. Yeah. And you have to run the LAN cable inside, and you've got to then think about power going to it. Yeah. Fortunately, the the Teutonic products all support uh, PoE, uh, passive PoE, but they do support PoE, so you can actually do that. Yeah. Um, but I think most people, especially when you look at the price of a housing, yeah, housing's not a cheap piece of kit. Well, what it does do though is it uh, negates the the problem that you've got with the cable between the antenna and the router, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So if, so if you if it would have been a long run, it may well actually be better to have it inside a housing anyway, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, that would be one of the reasons. I mean, yeah. certainly I had a guy who was, uh, I think, it was in Darkish Wales or something like that. Yeah, and he actually put a Teltonica router in a housing at the top of a hill. Yeah. And then run his Ethernet cable. And he run his Ethernet cable. Yeah. He had something like about an 80 odd meter Ethernet cable coming down. Well, you couldn't do that with an antenna cable, no. could you? Because it just would just, stop the antenna just, working. It just wouldn't work at all. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think we've covered most things mm. there. Mm. And then anyone who's listening might want to tune in and see Steve's outfit this month, which is yeah. uh, quite it's, entertaining, it's, isn't it? And yeah, well. Because you've gone with headgear this month as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying to stop my hair falling out, so yeah. it's, it's hopefully holding, holding the. Holding your hair. Holding in. my hair in. Yeah. You're growing old disgracefully, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, you can find us in all the usual places, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, and all of the others, which will all be listed below somewhere. Uh, so thank you very much. And anyone who's got any questions or feedback, leave it in the comments below or pop us an email across to sales at soulwise.co.uk. Any ideas for podcasts going forward, do let us know. And we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. Ta-da! Thank you for watching or thank you for listening, whichever you chose to do. Uh, if you normally listen, by all means, come and have a look at us over on YouTube if you want to scare yourselves. If not, just find us wherever you get your normal podcast from. Thank you very much. See you next month.